We are back with Brian McConaughey, founder of Ratnack International, a charity committed to fighting exploitation and human trafficking. Brian, you know, we've talked many times in this program about trafficking in Cambodia. It's usually about, has been about the trafficking of children, not totally eliminated, but that whole scene has changed, hasn't it? It's changed completely. Uh, human trafficking is a criminal uh, uh, activity, and as such, it's fluid. It's always fluid. And they are simply going to go where the most money is made. And so because of uh, the work of uh, charities and the work of the Cambodian police, uh, the child industry has diminished. Um, and so the, the real money to be made in the, the older uh, girls and young women now, and that's a, that's a massive industry. So we're really switching our focus now to where the, the greatest need is. Um, and so we're, we're dealing with uh, a lot more uh, labor trafficking. And I, I want to be very clear that people say labor trafficking, but that involves often sexual abuse as well. So it's males and females that are trafficked off to, to be used as slaves. Uh, so that's very much the, the direction we're headed. Uh, it's been a, a real challenge to get up to speed on some of those issues, but we're, we're we're trying to be fluid along with the criminal element as, as this changes. Yeah, change management is the one thing I know about yeah. international development. It changes yeah. so fast. And one of the things you've invested in, which you don't think of as like, oh, this is fighting trafficking, but rice mills. Yes. Uh, we, we've actually introduced some rice mills to communities up on the Thai border. There's a lot of trafficking of, of uh, uh, Cambodians across the border, and they're, they're, they're caught up uh, illegally in... Um, in Thailand doing these jobs without visas or whatever else and they're trucked out to the border uh, by the, the, the Thai police and dumped back into the arms often of traffickers. So we're, we're, we're getting in the way of that program and actually taking those people once they're returned across the border and gathering intelligence from them. Who trafficked you? Where are you from? What villages? All this, the, the, the movements of trucks, etc. And with that intelligence we're figuring out which communities are hit hardest by traffickers, where there's just all the adults and the, and the young working people have all been taken away. And there we're introducing rice uh, mills. Rice mills seem very abstract. What have they got to do with trafficking? They've got everything to do with trafficking. Uh, the rice farmers, the reason their, their kids disappear is they can't afford to feed them. Uh, they only get 17 cents a kilo uh, for the rice. They do this back-breaking work and they only get 17 cents a kilo from the rice mill owners. So we introduce uh, simple rice mills and with those rice mills, a whole community can process their own rice. It's literally owned by the community <clears throat> in a sense, yeah. right? The farmers own it themselves. We teach them how to use it. It's very simple. They can maintain it and run it for years. And with that rice mill processing themselves, their profit margins go up by 620%. Wow, we'd all like a raise like that. Oh my goodness, it's incredible. And so that allows them to have the money for the first time to not send their kids illegally to the border to try and get a job or, or be trafficked to make money. Because what's happening, you're teaching them about prevention. So all of a sudden they're aware of the toxic tactics of traffickers. But when they, even when they recognize it's happening, they're taking the risk because they're starving. Absolutely. If you're desperate or enough, you can be aware of the risks of trafficking, but if you're desperate enough, you'll do it anyway. And so what we want to do is remove that desperation. And so if we can provide them income, which these mills are doing, the farmers will, will be able to school their kids. I mean, we've got one farmer, uh, he approached the team and said, well, you know, this, this mill has allowed me to take my daughter, who was already in Thailand, high risk in a factory job, high risk for further trafficking, for sex abuse, whatever. I have brought her back with great pride. I have brought her back, and she is now in university in Phnom Penh. Absolutely transformative. And so we're able to do this with simple rice mills and basically build community stability that shuts the traffickers out. You know, in this work, you have to be so wise and so cagey. And I love how creative the solutions that Ratnak is providing for this. Thank you so much for all you do. It's our pleasure. And we'd like to invite you to be part of this. If you want to be part of stopping this modern-day form of slavery, please join us. You can give and help join us by calling 1-800-265-3100. You can also go to crossroads.ca slash relief-development. Thanks so much. We'll be right back.